Bilderberg's 60-year trajectory exposed. Powerful article up on Infowars.com. No fly zone enacted over Bilderberg meeting. Michael Savage on danger of Bilderberg 2013 and New World Order. Good job to Michael Savage coming in for the big win, joining the team. Uh, Bilderberg authoritarianism destroys humanity. Bilderberg security kicks out Alex Jones. Bilderberg 2013 transhumanist death cult. Uh, Amazon and Google chiefs join with corporate tax avoiders at annual Bilderberg Confab. That's just some of the news, and all the other world news is under that at prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. But without further ado, uh, I want to bring Paul Watson in, a native of Britannia, uh, to uh, give us his take. Uh, and so much breaking news, so much inside info, and also to get into what you thought of being thrown out of the hotel uh, last night. Uh, and of course, the day before, you were also thrown out by them, even though you were booked there. We're coming back today as well. So just the fact that we're telling them we're coming, we'll have even more security out, it'll be easier to penetrate that way. They don't understand terminology of strategy. Uh, but uh, Watson, uh, I will stop my perseveration. Uh, give me your general take on how big this is, the breaking news. Oh, it's interesting. Hold on, they just lost me? Okay. Came back yet? Just okay. came back. We are, we are, we are back live here. Thank you, guys. Go ahead. Yeah, some of the breaking news just came out in the last hour is the fact that the um, mayor of Watford, after first calling us, insinuating that we. Yeah, were... You got to speak up and get closer to the mic, or we need to turn the mic up. And in fact, should we go to break and, and, and come back with this, or are we good? Okay, just turn him up. Go ahead. Yeah, the mayor of Watford has come out and said that. Basically, she's written a letter to the Prime Minister, David Cameron, after first insinuating that we were violent extremists. And she's now demanding that they account for the expenses, the millions of pounds in taxpayer expenses, that this security operation is going to cost. And this is also after a prominent politician here locally came out and basically said the same thing. So for the first time, it seems a, a, a Prime Minister of Britain is going to have to address the Bilderberg meeting because, of course... Tony Blair lied uh, in front of Parliament saying he never attended the meeting, whereas in private he told Luke Radowski that he did. So it looks like David Cameron is going to have to address the fact that Bilderberg actually exists, is a real meeting of 120 of the world's power brokers, and the Watford mayor, after first demonizing us, now appears to be on our side, and they're, they're asking for answers. Because how dare us want to know about what's going on? Well, exactly. I mean, this ring of steel that you talked about to protect, you know, us from them, to protect them from us, whatever you want to look at it. It's amazing because they've got actual criminals who were over the LIBOR scandal. They've got HSBC people fined for laundering money for terrorists what's and drug What's wrong with lords. laundering money and running drugs <laughs> and terrorists? And, and I mean, what's wrong with fixing interest rates? So, yeah, and, you know, Peter Sutherland, responsible for the subprime mortgage collapse. So we've got actual financial criminals who are laundering money for terrorists and drug lords. And, you no know, wonder they don't want to be looked at. And yet, we're the threat. Why are we the threat? They're the threat to us. So why have they spent all this money erecting this ring of steel to protect them from us? We should be being protected. Well said, Watson. Another thing is they're discussing big data at Bilderberg this year, which basically means creating the, the surveillance database system, spying on social oh, media. Yeah, big, I, I need to get into the agenda. That's the big thing I was supposed to cover. The agenda, yeah. That's the secret ingredient of eggs erroneous. <laughs> but at the same time, Alex, the DHS over in America is talking about the exact same thing, big data. They use that very same well, no, term. They create the talking points and then hand them down to the minions, but then the talking point has compartmentalization within it. Precisely. So, you know, Google, Bilderberg, DHS, they're all very much on the same page in the exact same week talking about the same issues. It's amazing. Watson, uh, continue with what happened last night. Describe that. Basically, we went up to the Grove Hotel again. <laughs> it was my third visit. It was Alex's first visit, obviously, because he only landed yesterday. Uh, we walked around the grounds, took some pictures of the gardens, the skeleton statue, we tried to go and eat at a separate restaurant that's near the back of the property, quite out of the way. That was full. So we were directed to go to the main restaurant, which is right next to reception, 
in the actual hotel itself. Um, we got in, we sat down literally within 10, 15 minutes. The security were on us. First, they kidnapped Richard Reeves. He suddenly disappeared. Um, and Leanne told me that they'd taken him away. At that point, Alex was out getting dinner because it was, it was a like buffet. in a fancy restaurant with like yeah. violin music playing. They, like guys grab Reeves yeah. and disappears. But before that, several members of the hotel staff actually came up to Alex and said, you know, we're fans, we, we support what you're doing. So they're aware of it, which is why the security is so scared of us being there in case we get sources out of the hotel staff. And wait till the, till the Bilderberg guys are so rude to them, they'll all be on our side. It, it, Hillary's like, don't you look in my eyes, you bastard. She, I've, I've, I've talked to Tucker and others. I've talked to multiple witnesses. And then she'll have them fired if they look at her. And those memos got leaked like 15 years ago. You don't look at her. Precisely. And I mean, a lot of these people are billionaires. And yet routinely we hear from the hotel staff at these Bilderberg meetings that no they don't, don't tip. They don't tip at all, even though they're billionaires. So that's why the staff at all the hotels get really you know, pissed off with these Bilderberg members. And then later they leak information to um, Jim Tucker, God rest his soul, now other people who are taking over. So, yeah, basically we were in there. Richard Reeves got kidnapped. I came back to sit down. Alex was out getting the buffet dinner. Um, they went- Obviously. Up, obviously, shoveling carrots down my throat. They went to get Alex. They went to speak to Alex, told us to leave. They then came to the table, told me to leave. And basically, we said, no, we want to finish dinner. You know, we're going to pay for it. Yeah, let's be clear. They grabbed Richard. They all came around me, and I said no. And then waddled <laughs> back over with my food. And I kept eating it while they were standing around the table with all these people looking at us. Describe that. Yeah, <laughs> apparently all the people around us would, you know, they were aware what was going on, some of them. They knew we were media. And these security guys are just kind of hanging out outside a door that was five feet away from our table. They were also at the table. They were at the table. Then we said, no, we want to finish our dinner. So they were hanging out behind the door, peering through the window. And we were just sat there <laughs> trying to finish this dinner, which we were going to pay for, including an expensive bottle of wine. Um, we did manage to finish probably half of it. Um, and then we, we picked up the cell phones, started rolling the cameras and started walking outside and talking to these security personnel again but the, but the head of security literally was shaking and had tears in his eyes well that's what he looked like the first time when me and richard went there and i mean i don't know why he's so concerned all we're doing is eating dinner eating taking carrots shoveling carrots down our throats taking some pictures of a garden what possible threat is it to their no, security no, no, but, but i mean it's okay if you rob the whole world just oh, don't yeah, eat carrots yes you can launder money for terrorists and drug lords but just don't you eat put al-qaeda in libya and syria but just just whatever you do don't don't uh, don't have a Chianti and a carrots. Exactly. Don't take picture of the skeleton statue. So basically, we were we were talking to them. We were filming them. They escorted us outside. Um, eventually, we got in the car. We were talking to them the whole way. Uh, we started driving out the property. We were followed by a security guard in a separate car behind us, who then did some weird thing where he kept reversing and almost crashing into the side of the path. Because we, me and Alex got out of the car at the exit. No, he was menacing our van with his back of his truck. Yeah. And then he like ran into something up again. <laughs> that was ridiculous. So then me and Alex got out of the vehicle while Richard and Leanne drove away in the, in the bus, in the car. And um, apparently the, the police soon arrived after that in the general vicinity and were pulling over other individuals, which they may have mistaken for us. We're not sure about that, but that's, that could have been what was happening. But, you know, the, the police turned up at the hotel last time when me and Richard were there and did nothing. They turned up outside, got out of the police car and just walked around to a different side of the building. So the police don't seem to be too keen in getting involved. Well, no, I've talked to our sources. They were just told... They were actually told a BS story last night. Then, no, we we rolled down the window and talked to them. Yeah. They didn't stop us. Oh, no. Yeah, so they don't want to be involved. The whole deal is they get it, they don't like it, and they're like, why don't they have their own security? We don't have to sit here and treat everybody like criminals. Exactly. So, so, so that's what's going on on that front. We're going to go to break in a few minutes and come back uh, with a final segment in the main show with Leanne McAdoo, and then I'm going to continue uh, with Bilderberg News uh, 2013. And uh, again, we've got some other major breaking news as well. I need to analyze uh, their agenda because this agenda that you're going to hear is what you're now for the next year going to hear over and over again. There's an article, Bilderberg's 
60-year trajectory up on Infowars.com that is so incredibly important because it explains. See, if you don't study, you're like, who cares if 150 people are being in a hotel? When you realize this is one of their big secret meetings at the top of the pyramid that has been unearthed. And I use this analogy with David Icke yesterday because I've watched Discovery Channel shows or History Channel shows like all of you have. All the time out in the Sahara Desert or even in Yucatan, Mexico or Guatemala, south of there or, or in places in Peru, they'll be doing a construction site or building a dam. And someone will notice something sticking up out of the rubble, a spire, uh, and they start digging and there's a whole palace under it. And that's what's happened. Bilderberg is a key part of the palace of the, the New World Order, the Fortress of Darkness. But now we've dug away more and more and it just gets worse and worse. It's like a police investigation. I've used the analogy of finding one body in a guy's car. That's Bilderberg. You find the dead woman in the back seat or in the trunk and they go to his house and there's 30 dead people. They're in refrigerators. They're buried in the basement. They're in the backyard. Uh, you know, it's like Jeffrey Dahmer. That's how it is. That's why they're like, don't look at us. There's nothing going on. We don't exist. Okay, we exist, but we're no big deal. Because it's the, we've gotten their minutes. People have stolen the minutes. It's come out. Bilderberg Group members have bragged and published books like the German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt back in the 80s. And he's like, what's wrong with world government? Yeah, we're going to take over and merge with machines and bring in world government. I mean, why not? It's the next hip thing. And I don't even think Helmut Schmidt's an evil guy. You know, it's it, it, it's kind of like Carol Quigley. He goes, I believe in world government. And I believe in, you know, getting rid of the family and setting up a planetary rule. I mean, if we don't, someone else will. I mean, might as well be us in charge. I mean, everybody deserves to live a little. I mean, you know you want to be part of it. Come on. You can join the team. It's like a quote out of They Live. Remember that part where he goes, glad to see you got here, boys. <laughs> Might need to get yourself a little bit fancier duds now that you're on the team. <laughs> Good to have you here. Haven't got one of these little watches yet? They're great for communication, but also disappearing if you want to. I mean, have you ever seen They Live, McAdoo? It's based, that that old movie is an allegory where Rowdy Piper has to beat up his black friend, I forget what, he, what his name is in the film, to make him put the glasses on. Because it's so easy, you put the glasses on, you, you start looking at what's really going on in the world. You pay attention, and let me tell you, you're going to see so much, you get a headache want to take the glasses off. That's another allegory, is that I've tried to get the guy that wrote that essay back in the 60s on, but he's pretty reclusive. That was written in the 60s, they live. And you take the glasses off, you know, because he's just giving you a headache. You, you know, seeing, the truth is seeing is a headache too, but it's better than being a total slave, living in absolute and complete la-la land. So we've got other big breaking news. I've got news so big that I haven't even gotten to it yet because it's only about 90% confirmed and I'm still jostling and dealing with it and trying to figure out how to even put it out. More news breaking at infowars.com, more news breaking at prisonplanet.com, nightly news coming up tonight that'll have a whole boil down to this, seven o'clock central at prisonplanet.tv. If you're not a prisonplanet.tv subscriber, one membership, $5.95 a month is 11 memberships that's 55 cents or less a person get a membership at prisonplanet.tv give it as an e-gift today and support our info war we'll be back with leanne mcadoo straight ahead pro pure is introducing pro one all of your filtration in one system portable on the go this is the pro one by pro pure you wanted it you got it no more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it. And out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine. 
hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. We've got Alex live from England. I'm David Knight, and he's going to be joining us there in just a second. We're going to go to him. He's got Leanne McAdoo and Paul Joseph Watson are there talking about what they've been seeing at Bilderberg. It's live there at uh, Watford, England, just north side of London. But the interesting context of what's going on here is from an article by The Guardian, a, a UK newspaper talks about the irony of Bilderberg happening at the same time that there is a massive scandal unfolding in the UK over lobbyists. That's right. Just like in America, lobbyists who come in and talk to politicians have very strict rules about when they can meet and the uh, disclosure of these meetings and that sort of thing. And yet, in the midst of this giant scandal that's involving members from every one of the political parties there, pretty much, oh, not, not the UK that's party the as far as I understand, it's this. just amazing that while this is all happening, uh, you've got Bilderberg, where the most powerful people are meeting in secret, sec surrounded by security, private and public security, for nearly a week, and no one is allowed to know what they're talking about. There's not going to be any disclosure, no controls, no transparency. This is all happening while there's a major scandal about that very thing happening in the UK Parliament. Alex, are you there? David, that is amazing what you just said. You know, when I was flying here on Sunday, we talked, or maybe it was Saturday, and you said, obviously, you see the big scandal breaking in the news over lobbyists and payoffs in government. And look at how Bilderberg is a giant lobbying meeting. That's why they don't want it looked at. And I just realized that's the real angle in this. This is a giant secret lobbying meeting going on during England's biggest lobbying scandal ever with, what is it, three or four members of parliament have resigned? How many is it now? I think it's three last I saw. It's almost like uh, you could hold a too big to jail scandal, right? <laughs> That's it. That's it. Bilderberg, too big to jail. The, right. the lobbying scandal. Watson, you go write that. I'm telling you. Because because I love David Knott. He points out stuff that's so obvious. I've missed it. But also so, so important. Absolutely, David. And again, we're going to do 30 minutes of overdrive with you and Leanne McAdoo coming up. Some stations carry it. If they don't, we appreciate those stations. They're welcome to pick it up if they want later in Aaron. Infowars.com forward slash show or Infowars.com forward slash uh, Bilderberg has the Ustream, but also our own streams and the audio streams at Infowars.com. We'll have it. And then for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers, it'll be restreamed and then archived for everybody on YouTube by tomorrow. But just in a few minutes, uh, we're going to come back and go into 30 minutes of overdrive with you on that subject. So huge. He's been clamoring all day. Hey, let's cover this. Let's cover that. Tomorrow, when you do the first hour without me there interrupting you, David, be sure and focus in on this lobbying and that point you just made of, of all the documents we've got on Bilderberg, where they've been in trouble with Lockheed back in the 70s, oh, yeah. indictments and stuff over lobbying. But we're going to break, Leanne McAdoo, but give us a little foretaste of what's coming up. What is your view on what you've seen at Bilderberg and what happened last night in the next minute? Well, just us walking around this beautiful hotel, it was just, I mean, every inch of it was gorgeous. All but the carved it, trees. Yeah, but then it was slowly being shut in by this rim of steel, and that is exactly what the elite want to do. They want everything beautiful, but they want it all for themselves. Shut us out. We can't see. We can't peer in. There's nothing to see here, you know, and it's just, it's just incredible. It's like the energy. <laughs> the forbidden city. Yes, exactly. What are you going to be talking about the next 30 minutes when we come back? Uh, well, I would love to talk about the energy of Stonehenge. It was amazing. It felt kind of like a roller coaster ride. Have you ever um, felt anything like that? It was, it was incredible. Have you ever felt anything like that? I don't believe so. Not that I could recall. 
Unless did it's you notice how you walked over that ley line, though? And that's yeah. What... No, it's just you, you just dipped. Like, woo. <laughs> Hope you can see that on the the, the video there. <laughs> and it's not hype. We were like, oh, here it is. Okay, boring. No, it's exactly. Like, oh. Exactly. Hey, uh, Stonehenge is famous for a reason, and so is InfoWars.com. They're full of electricity and life. Stay with us. viewers have demanded it so now you're gonna get it more pro second amendment gun shows in the month of june what we've learned is you cannot hide behind an i-beam when there's a 50 cal present brothers in arms 50 cal ammo review and more coming in the month of June to the Info War. Transmitting worldwide from high atop the Bilderberg 2013 meeting that we intend to piss on, to use a British term. <laughs> I am your host, Alex Jones, and I am having an incredibly good time fighting tyranny, waking people up, hanging out with Richard. Reeves, you've got Paul Watson, Stevie, Steve Watson, his brother's waiting down there with his girlfriend. Your wife's coming. That's going to be neat to meet her. I've talked to her so many times on the phone. And then we've got Leanne McAdoo right here with us. There she is. We've got uh, good old Richard right over there. For, that's right. For, for TV viewers, giving a little bit of a shot. We've got Watson right there. And you've got pumpkin head. Just notice the size. <laughs> they say like aliens with advanced intelligence have bigger heads. Notice they have a big head. Look how tiny their heads are compared to yeah. me. Look at that. It's like a peanut over there. Look at that. <laughs> and then they got the Corton over there. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that was self-deprecating humor. The trolls will say, look, he's bragging. He's so smart. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke. Uh, I'm not smart, but you're not smart enough to get it. Not, not regular viewers and listeners, but trolls must be fed. Trolls are key pollinators. They actually spread the word of the show. I'm trying to figure out the ultimate troll feeding device. <laughs> McAdoo, what do you uh, what do you think the ultimate troll feeding device is? Um, I'm I'm well. Apparently, it's been my jewelry today. So. That's right. Oh <laughs> my all, God! They were all they were all they were all pumped about the Nazi earrings, but they're not. They're, well, they're thunderbirds. So they don't know what a thunderbird is. Yeah, these are Native American thunderbirds. These are my going to war earrings. No, that alone. You're only trying to cover up your Illuminati connections. No one can be successful unless they're in the Illuminati, uh, which is t which is not true, folks. But Watson, what do you think the ultimate troll feeding secret is? Uh, that you're Bill Hicks, and I'm a shape shifting reptoid, and the the proof is in. There are whole Facebook pages devoted to it. Forget the globalist meeting right in front of us. Let's. You know, that's a real issue, obviously. Forget the sodium fluoride in the water and the cancer exploding. Well, no, you're Bill Hicks, obviously. That's what matters. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to break. Hey, let me ask, we're going to come back and get serious with the rest of the Bilderberg News. Go over their agenda, talk to uh, David Knight, who dropped this bombshell, and he's been, like, talking to me. David, was it Friday you called me, or was it at the office I saw you? And you're like, hey, are you covering this big scandal? Was it you? Yeah, I remember yeah it, was, it, it was me on Sunday, just before you left. I said, that's right. Yeah. Hey, if they if they don't let you in, <laughs> point out the scandals that are going on right amongst their midst and tell them and you said, why aren't they looking exactly, at this. Now I remember, I, just, my memory's foggy because I've been tired. I was driving to the airport with McAdoo, and you're like, hey, Notice this is a lobbying meeting, and there's a scandal about lobbies, and I got it, but I forgot it. And then I'm like, whoa, whoa, that's the big angle no one's hitting. That's the big enchilada. Yeah, yeah. This, the, the, the lobbyist, that. the giant lobbyist meeting that, and, and they're pointing out in the, the local papers here that, uh, of course, uh, David Cameron and company said they were going to have the most transparent administration ever. Does that sound familiar? You heard somebody Obama say that, that here? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Obama said that. The people who focus on that, it's almost like a tell. It's almost like saying, you know, we're going to be honest. We're going to be open because they know they're going to be the most crooked, secretive cabal that's ever been <laughs> in power, right? So it's, it's almost a tell of exactly the opposite of what they're going to do is what they campaign on. We got, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> and the, I was crushing Leanne's head. You know, oh, that, okay. I'm crushing our head. I, I'm crushing our head. I thought no, you were giving I'm me like, a secret oh, hand signal or something there. Well, that was. It was Illuminati. <laughs> 
No, no, seriously. I totally agree with you. You're absolutely right. I, it's just kind of a party atmosphere here. How, how are you doing today? Doing fine. Doing great here. Doing fine here. Everything's yeah. great. Nothing about oh, yeah. Major Reactor League. <laughs> That's right. We're doing okay. We're doing just fine here. No, but well, seriously, the, the Death Star is orbiting at maximum velocity here. And we're here trying to expose the Death Star exists. Because if we can admit the Death Star exists, we can do something about it, David. What do you say to that? Yeah, I think it's yeah. right. You know, the stated purpose of Bilderberg is public education. We're really trying to educate the public. They're trying to keep people in the dark. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com So uh, we're going to be here for another 25 minutes or so. And, oh, you've got local time on that clock. Good. Thank you. I see 208 here on our, our computer. Uh, Paul Watson's here. Leanne McAdoo. Uh, we've got Richard Reeves doing engineering here with us uh, on the road. I do plan to take some calls tomorrow. David Knight will do the first hour. Then I'll do the second two hours with him riding shotgun. I want to get into their agenda this year and then talk about our Stonehenge experience today, which is just crazy. I'm going to go back to with high-def cameras. We had our iPhones out today. We weren't intending to have some wild experience but looking at uh, them just in the last six years publishing their names and then now their agenda looking at this i want to talk about their agenda but for people that just joined us david nye is the one that pointed out the elephant in the room to me sunday when i was going to the airport just a few days ago and or i guess just a few days ago just like a day and a half ago that there's a lobbying scandal three or four members of parliament resigning huge corruption and here that's what Bilderberg is, is a secret lobbying meeting, mm -hmm. hiding in plain view. And, of course, it violates the Logan Act. We've made that point before, but that's why they don't want to discuss. That's why they don't want to be seen driving in, because they can't believe they're going in and saying, I own this energy company. I will pay you $200 million in your Swiss bank account. Is of the governor of Texas. You shut down all competition and agree with the federal government. I mean, that's the type of stuff going on. Yeah, that's not on their lobbyist schedule, is it? That's, that, they don't have those kinds of things listed on their on their schedule of events. They've got a schedule of events, and of course, since there's no transparency, we don't know exactly what that is. As you mentioned before, even on the attendees list, the real people that we have to worry about are the ones that uh, they don't mention, the people that they're grooming to be future presidents that just show up exactly. coming in the back door. That's who we want. That's who we want. That's why we need more eyes, like kind of like a compound eye. We need thousands of people here with their own cameras, their own YouTube, and whoever gets, because they always think we're not there, like when Eric Holbrook, or Holbrook walked out uh, or the head of Google walked out or all these cases. You don't know. You may be a prostitute in North London, and, 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 and Bill Gates comes in. I'm not saying he goes to prostitutes, but <laughs> the point is he's got plenty of Microsoft groupies, I'm told, but the point is is that you never know where the intel is going to be. Uh, I want to go over some of the agenda uh, here, but uh, Leanne McAdoo, before we go into the agenda, I want to keep you here for Stonehenge. Any other points you want to add about what's happened? Uh, what's the first thing to come to top of your mind discussing Bilderberg? Um, well, I thought it was kind of funny that the, um, what was it, the G4S? were guarding this room where they it looked like they were setting up a dance party. And so I, that just gives me like a really, I, I'm- Well, kidding. they were building platforms, putting yeah. in lights. Yes, like if they're gonna have a disco dance party with Kissinger and I mean, <laughs> this is, I wanna be in there. I want my cameras, I gotta see that, I need to see it. <laughs> I got a feeling it's for some special speakers. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. get, get down and what did you make of, of, of the head of security, like tears in his eyes? 
he just was so, I couldn't tell if he was just so angry. I mean, he looked like he wanted to cry. And he was oh, just he like, tears in his eyes. he was like, Mr. Alex Jones. And you're like, <laughs> that's me. I'm just getting some food. That's right. You were there when he confronted me. <laughs> yes. You just hear this diabolical voice and, you know, tries to lead us out. And I said to him, you know, do you have any idea what's going on with those? And he said, ma'am, I'm, I'm, you know, I try, try to remain non-political and I'm just the manager here at the Grove. And I said, but you, you have no idea who you're. But how, who are they to cancel our reservations four days before it started? Exactly. Who are they to have their, the, the security people shaking in fear of people? They, they know who we are. They know I have no criminal record. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, the worst thing they're going to get is I'm going to buy them dinner. Exactly. And you're Man. always, you know, so nice and treat them with, like, such respect. And he's going to be in for a huge shock when they treat him like dirt on the shoe. Well, that's one of the bonanza hits because mm -hmm. they are such jerks. Reportedly, none of them get tips. Right. Oh, no. Yeah, that's, I work. Because why would you give a scum anything? Yeah. It's all about, it's all about dominating people. Yeah, and that's the thing that is so frustrating because they're really spinning this as the protesters and the you know the press and all these people that they're going to be committing all these criminal acts and that everyone needs to be careful of the protesters and you know closing off the roads and not letting anyone camp out. Originally, you know, they were going to let people camp. Not they're telling not. locals not to let us use their property. Yeah, on the farms in the area. And trying to kind of scare the locals and spin and 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 just kind of don't worry about why they're protesting or why there's this big uproar of these people meeting. It's just you should feel lucky and you should feel special that the elite chose your town to come and have their... Well, that's what the mayor said first. I'm just glad we're prestigious enough. But the good news is, Watson, reading her in the paper, you're saying that looks like she's starting to wake up. Yeah, she's written a letter to David Cameron, Prime Minister of Britain, basically complaining about the security costs and demanding that the central government pay something towards those costs. So that's a big shift from what she said earlier, which was just demonizing the protesters. But what's also interesting is that the Grove security said that they were non-political in their actions in turfing it out, because my complaint was that we were being discriminated against based on our political views. And by the way, that's a British anti-EU law. Yeah, it's illegal because, yeah, to do can't, that. Like Hitler first shut down hotels and stuff to Jews, like hotels were shut down to blacks. You shut people down where they can go for their views, their religion, their color. That's real tyranny. Yeah, it's, it's illegal under the Equality Act of 2010, and EU human rights law also affirms that it applies to political opinion. Because people who've been sacked for supporting a political party have won cases. People who've been denied services in hotels based on that same law have won cases. So the fact they said, oh, we're non-political. It's very humiliating to book something you've, no, you've done nothing wrong, and then you can't be there. You're treated like a criminal. Yeah, and we, it's not like we were trying to access secure areas. We were it's in the like garden. A slimy lobbyists want to meet and engage in crime. Exactly. Going on to the agenda, though, I noticed the top of the list is, can the U.S. and Europe grow fast and create jobs? Which is pretty ironic, given the fact that back in 2006, before it happened, Daniel Estulin pred predicted the housing collapse in America because he had the source they were going to have the source, it. yeah. That was the big banker that was over that big production house. And that was in Canada in 2006, Bilderberg. No, no, they, they own China. They're deindustrializing us on purpose. So everything they put in the agenda is the opposite of what they're actually doing. Exactly. We want to give you jobs. <laughs> we're going to go over the trends right now. Okay, give us the trend you want to talk about. Well, I'm just curious, I mean, touching on what you said about the way that they have the agenda, it's like, oh, look, it's just harmless. We're going to talk about jobs and entitlement. But the thing that's kind of worrying uh, to me are the major trends in medical research. That's like, well, what do you have up your sleeve? Well, that's use us as guinea pigs while they discover the fountain of youth that tested all on us. Yeah. Look what our research with our GMOs have done to the humans. David Knight, you want to say anything about this agenda? Yeah, I think it's pretty amazing, just like we said before the break, that their stated purpose is public education. I mean, what a what a bigger lie could they come up with? I mean, here is the and most secretive group you've ever control. seen. Absolutely. There's no oversight. There's no public information of this at all. And they call it a public education organization. And they also have a, uh, a, it's a private charity registered in the U.K. that's paying for these expenses. 
and there's three people listed at the top of that uh, charity. And the, the one guy, one of the three guys, is Marcus Agius, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, it's A-G-I-U-S, former chair of Barclays, who resigned over the LIBOR scandal. So <laughs> these are the kind of guys, I mean, you want to talk about this being... Uh, pure lobbying, pure exchange of political favors done in total secrecy, and yet they have the audacity to call themselves to say that they're about public education. Oh, yeah, this is an insider's who who, who's who of elitist corruption, Watson. Mm -hmm. The thing that, you know, sticks out to me is they say they're concerned about all these, these issues, cyber warfare, when they're behind the cyber attacks, Stuxnet flame, it's admitted, even the New York Times admits it, that the U.S. and Israel were behind those attacks. Problem reaction solution. Yeah, but Bilderberg's concerned about it. They're the ones behind it. Africa's situation, back in 2011, Sam Moritz, it was right before they turfed out Gaddafi. We got word that they were going to go ahead with the, the final assault on Tripoli. Three months later, it happened down to a T when we predicted it. And look at Libya now. It's a total destabilization program. State Department Memorandum 200 is how to destabilize Africa and other countries, but Africa's the model, how to cut off food, fund rebels, blow up governments. And they're doing that to America and the EU and Britain. The whole, U you know, the whole European Union is just a system to take over and destroy the United Kingdom and other systems. It's economic warfare. They're on record with Kissinger. The illegal we do it right now, immediately, the unconstitutional later. Watson? Precisely. And I mean, yeah, look at Libya immediately after they turfed out Gaddafi. Now it's a complete hellhole. So they're concerned about all these issues when they're the culprits behind them. Jeffrey Dahmer is concerned about dead bodies <laughs> in his freezer. Well, precisely. And some of the other trends are U.S. foreign policy. Again, cyber warfare, they're behind the cyber attacks. Online education. That's the Ministry of Truth for the Internet, which we talked about. Propaganda on the web. Gonna yeah, which Bill Clinton called for. Developments in the Middle East. Well, now they're obviously destabilizing. Current affairs means how to spin scandals and divert it that there's no corruption going on. We're about to go to break uh, here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Leanne McAdoo's here with me, Paul Watson. In the final segment, we're going to talk about our Stonehenge uh, experiment uh, today, which we didn't know would be an experiment, but it turned into one. Uh, Leanne McAdoo, any other points on this agenda? Um, no, sorry. <laughs> No, no, you're doing great. I mean, you, you had points you wanted to make earlier. Online education, promises and impacts, politics of the European Union. Everybody wants out of it. It's a giant crime syndicate. Developments in the Middle East, they're funding Al-Qaeda to take over. Current affairs, cover, nationalism and populism. One, two, three, four, five. Five is the most important. Nationalism and populism is people trying to use old government systems that have checks and balances. They're not perfect to try to block these globalists taking over. They want to shut that down. Nationalism and populism. Humanity is the big enemy. We'll be right back. We're nationalists. Hello, I'm Alex Jones. Myself, my family, the InfoWars.com team want to relay to you and your families that we are intensifying our efforts against the globalist on every front. Infowars.com is leading the fight against the technocrats. But we can't do that without your help. By getting the films, bumper stickers, and t-shirts at Infowars.com, you will wake up people in your area and support our operation as we move to the next level. We need your help to spread the word like never before. They wish to hide themselves during this tectonic battle between the forces of freedom and darkness. You are the response to the globalist technocrats and their program of global eugenics dehumanization and ultimate extermination. The war is here. It's an info war. The spirit of 1776 versus the mindset of 1984. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years in serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems 
system today, complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231, and the Berkey Guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey Guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey Guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653. Or order online at GoBerkey.com. That's GoBerkey.com today. What if you had a witness everywhere you drive? Now you can with VideoDashCam.com. From truckers to motorcyclists, the handy Video Dash Cam can be used for insurance claims, accidents, police encounters, road rage, or natural disasters. Has instant screen playback and optional night vision. Get the best quality, affordable HD Dash cameras available at VideoDashCam.com. That's VideoDashCam.com. Or call 855-855-2022. Always have a witness with Video Dash Cam. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Hi, Ted Anderson. I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. <laughs> Are you still a traditional smoker? Now experience a new lifestyle and try vaping with e-cigarettes by LeSig. Imagine no ashes, stains, nasty smell, or coughing and hacking. With LeSig e-cigarettes revolutionary microelectronic technology, rechargeable battery, and unique replaceable cartridge, you'll get all the benefits and satisfaction of smoking without the hazards. Choose your taste from a wide variety of our new American-made vaporeate e-liquids at LeSig.com. And LeSig smokes the competition by serving thousands of worldwide customers with real people customer service fast free same day shipping and a 30 day warranty and satisfaction guarantee so are you ready for a new vaping lifestyle then call 870-518-4307 that's 870-518-4307 or visit lesig.com spelled l-e-c-i-g.com lesig e-cigarettes for today's modern smoker All right, folks, InfoWars Nightly News. We'll have more information tonight at 7 o'clock Central. All of it boiled down for you with Jakari Jackson, David Knight, uh, Darren McBreen, uh, the, and the rest of the amazing crew. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.